All right, thank you for joining me for part two of why we should believe in Jesus. So <laughs> we had discussed in the previous video that um, there is so much more in the spirit realm in our spiritual hope, you know, like the kingdom, living eternally in goodness in the kingdom of God. And you can only find that through Jesus. You know, you can't, you can't understand that in this earth because his kingdom's not of this physical earth. So, um, that's one reason. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to a few more reasons why, um, we should believe in Jesus and make him our Lord and Savior of our life. So another reason is because not only like we discussed in the, in the spiritual realm, do you have reward, but you also have reward here in your life now. Because once you make, you know, as we um, had mentioned before, you become a new creature and you come into new life. So, in saying that, you actually improve as a person. You know, we're, a lot of, a lot of us are, we find it a good thing to strive to be a better person and to, you know, um, become the best us, right? You want to become the best you. And when you walk with Jesus, he actually helps you to do that. Um, and so we can learn about that by reading the Bible as well. And that's why it's also very crucial that we do read the Bible because it teaches us how to become a better person and how to examine ourselves. So, um, a lot of people, what they'll do is meditation or even self-reflection, and that helps them reflect on what they can improve on and and um, why they why their mindset is this way, so that they can improve it or you know uh, habits. But um, and it's the same thing with the Bible; it teaches you how to like examine yourself so you can improve on being a better person. Um, I've learned how to overcome trials and traps of this world by learning to walk in His Spirit, in Holy Spirit. And like we discussed in the previous video, that's a lot because in the physical world, you know, it seems like bad things can happen. But when you start looking through spiritual lenses, I guess you can say, um, you start learning you start feeling confident and hopeful because those things don't really, they don't stop you from the reward that you're, you're still going towards. Um, the, the, there are ways that are above this world and above human understanding, above human, you know, basic instinct or mindset or any physical thing um, that's easy for us to just learn. And we learn that about God, that His wisdom is, is just way above ours, and His ways are above ours. So that's how you can start learning to reach to a higher you, because you're reaching beyond what is, what is normal or what is, um, you know, what you, what the limitations of the world is what I mean. You learn to actually reach beyond limitations of this world. And you find wisdom and strength that you can only, that only Jesus provides for you. Um, I learned how to overcome worry, depression. I had anger, man <laughs> anger problems. I learned anger management. Um, I overcame demonic suppression. And even as a child, strength against bullies, and we learn unjust, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, what is that, like, strength against the unjust discrimination that we get in this world. Um, you learn forgiveness, which is something very hard for people to do, but it actually brings healing. And it sets you free. And you find out how to love yourself through Jesus' love. And nowadays, that's a really big topic as well. Because people 
find that a lot of people talk about love yourself now. Um, and I just, I think it's a, it's a, I think it, it's a, a thing that a lot of us, especially this generation, went through was learning how to actually care about yourself. Um, I will later post up more videos about my own personal experience, but Jesus, Jesus actually teaches you through his love how to actually love and care for yourself. And it's not easy, but the fact that you learn that through coming to know Jesus, it's just... It's so nice. I mean, if you've learned how to accept yourself, respect yourself, when everybody else does the complete opposite, and you, um, you will know what I mean by how, how much, like, strength and relief and peace and, and this happiness that I can't really explain but it it comes into your life and you know in this healing you even feel free from these these bonds and that people have placed around your emotions or around your minds set um, and that is possible through Jesus so it's amazing to I mean, it's so hard to kind of find that in this world, but Jesus provides it automatically. And you also learn um, how to love other people. You don't. You learn how not to judge judge other people. You know um, how to treat others how you want to be treated. And that sounds funny. We learn that in fifth grade, but do we do it? No. You know we don't. You really learn to become like in union with people around you and that is love and um love conquers fear and it conquers death and it conquers hate and you really learn how to truly love people i mean and like i said i mean love is the strongest thing and so you learn where can you learn that in this human world you know to love that truly we're taught to hate each other and to be selfish and all this stuff but you learn how to love others you even learn how to love your enemies those who hurt you I mean who who does that um, when you come to you know believe in Jesus and learn about him and, and, and have him in your life you find gratitude and the reason I bring gratitude up is because thank, being thankful for it's so easy for us to complain like I said before we're always seeking to improve things like ourselves so you know it's hard to keep a balance of trying to improve but also being thankful and satisfied for what you do have. Um, also because we're, I, I guess, you know, a lot of people, it's easy for us, it's really easy to not think about the bad things that happen in the world to people. You know, so then we forget how blessed we are. But my goodness, when you realize how blessed you are and you're grateful for that every day and you're thankful, that is like a fountain that just overflows with you start having peace and happiness. And I mean happiness that the world can't provide you. Or, you know, you think, I used to feel like I didn't like being happy because I feel like the minute I'm happy, something bad is going to happen. You know, things are, they don't last or things are too good to be true. Um, and your circumstances don't make you happy. So, and they leave you hopeless. Like, where can you find 
where can you find stability in that? But Jesus never changes. So the, the happiness and peace that you get from him, it never runs out. It's a source that's inexhaustible. And doesn't matter what situation you're in or what happened or what circumstance or what anything because it doesn't matter what odds are against you because you still have that happiness because you have that gratitude I, it's just you can't I can't explain it in human terms but it really comes through and only Jesus can provide that to your spirit you learn how to live a righteous and prosperous life. Um, and the reason I bring that up is because, you know, the way the world teaches us a lot is to be bad. Who's the baddest? You know, everybody likes, you know, to be the baddest, or it teaches you that you have to be bad and tough and mean to get somewhere because you know it's full of competition comparison and all that right standards and you know you don't have to worry about that when you're living for God because he teaches you how to be good and righteous and I can tell you right now you know at the end of the day, everybody loves a good man. Everybody loves a good man. A good person, that's what they want. You know, all fun and fun and kidding aside, everybody really just wants what's good. And we want a successful life. And obviously, um, you know, being Christian, living in this world, it's not easy. Um, you know, and you might not find, I guess you can say material or earthly success, necessarily. But, you can. I mean, I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying, that's not our, that's not our focal point in life um, as a Christian. Because our success is, our reward is in, you know, it's... It's in the kingdom of God. It's not supposed to be just... We're supposed to be just saving it here on earth. Um, but... That's the point, though. You know, our prosperous life, we live happy, we're blessed. We have everything that, you know, we need. God gives us the desires of our hearts. And that's what I mean by you learn to live a righteous and prosperous life. You are happy and and good and successful and you find that abundance only through Jesus he really gives it beyond what this world can provide you know more than enough um, now of course I don't you know I'm not saying make the mistake of being a Christian for the benefits because a lot of people a lot of Christians will do that um, they'll be like okay God, you know, God's gonna help me with this, so if I be a Christian, this'll, this'll happen, or whatever. Um, no. Okay, God's not your servant, you're God's servant. Do not tell God what to do, and don't get mad at him if he doesn't give you everything you ask, because actually he's, he's, he, the Bible says he works everything together for the good of those who love him and called to his purpose. So again, you're living according to his purpose. You're his servant, not the other way around. And second of all, he might not give you exactly what you ask every time, but that might be, and more than likely, because he's trying to protect you and give you something better, because I can tell you every single, he always answers my prayers. And and the, the few that he doesn't, I, I end up finding out why. And I'm thankful that didn't happen. So, um, don't, don't become a Christian because you want to get stuff out of God. That's not how it works. You know, the Bible says, God will give you the desires of your heart when you delight in him. And seek first the kingdom. And then those things will be added to you. So, um, that's, that's true love 
is just loving God. You know, like in a marriage, you know, but for better or for worse, it's not, oh, you give me this and I'll be happy. No, that's not true worship. Worship is through anything. And you're going to have persecution and you're going to have trials walking a Christian life. Um, don't take advantage of, I mean, don't take for granted God's blessings. Again, they're blessings. Um, the Bible says it rains on the righteous and the unrighteous. But when when you actually start worshiping and loving God truly, then He will bless you more than you could have asked for. And um, let's go ahead and read First Peter three ten through twelve. And um, this is, this is um, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. So, you know, God, he listens to us, and he shines his light on us, and he shines his face on us, and he wants to help us. But those who live for him in righteousness in in the right way um, and then Jesus will provide you what you need and what's good for you like I said this includes spiritually also I mean I mean both spiritually and in this um, physical world in life because it, he will show you abundance and favor in this world in this lifetime in your lifetime but um, again it, it all goes back to the spirit uh, the spirit realm in life after death so we can read John 4 14 and it says <clears throat> but whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. So Jesus is talking about um, if you drink of my water, then you will never thirst, and in you will be a fountain that will be everlasting, everlasting. Um, so what he's meaning by this is that we don't have to long for we don't have to long or want for things or especially life itself because that life which is the water will will ever eternally continue in us because his his he is the life and the water of life is a continuous flow from him so, yeah, it, when you have Jesus in your life, you have more than you'll ever need and forever. It never runs out. You don't need to be, you don't need to have to worry about earning your way in this world or working yourself to death. In, unju in unjust matters or ways just to get what's good for you. Yeah, there's a thing of, uh, there, of course, we're going to have to, you know, work for work to eat and work to provide for ourselves and families and, and work to achieve dreams, yes, but you don't have to worry about being mean to other people so you can get on top first or comparing yourself to people's standards or all that. You don't need to worry about all that because God provides for you. He knows what you need and he wants to give it to you. He'll bless you with the best, more better than you could really even what you know, what you think would be good for yourself. He provides you with even better, and he gives you the treasures that won't perish. And these treasures are not, um, it's not about the treasures that you store here on earth that will perish. It's about the treasures that are in heaven in his kingdom that you will join in your, um, after, you know, in your afterlife forever with him and he says that don't don't depend on this temporary life this temporary world but put your heart 
that where it will never perish. Um, and he says that in 1 John 2, 17 and Matthew eleven twenty eight thirty. 28, 30. And let's read a Matthew 6, 19, 21. Nineteen through twenty-one. Do not lay up for yourselves treasure on earth, where moth and and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So, that's another reason to believe in Jesus and make Him um, part of your life. All right, let's go ahead and in this um, in this part today, and then we'll continue with part three. Thank you.